But the way I the way I say it is like the general situation philosophy is interesting to put it mildly. Uh, philosophers have had thousands of years to uh, think about interesting and fundamental questions and have uh, produced uh, writings and, and have discussions and and sound clever. And now they have just a few decades left to come up with answers and have make sure those answers are correct and those answers can be programmed into computers. So do I know the answer to ethics? Do I know the solution to ethics? Nope. Neither does anyone else. And that's why it's really really uh, inconvenient moment for humanity to create an AGI because we don't know what we want, we don't know what we should want. Uh, so yes, it's in that. So that's uh, like there are like two big uh, unsolved problems in, uh, in creating an AGI that's really uh, beneficial to us. One is uh, figuring out uh, what we want, and uh, and the second is uh, figuring out uh, how to make the AGI stick to that and not not uh, diverge. Uh, as, it, as it goes creating on new AGIs. So, yeah, but uh, th this was also another topic that we discussed with Ben's team. Not, it wasn't actually uh, Ben who was uh, uh, arguing about that, uh, but it was uh, Mikey. Uh, he said that uh, uh, that he doesn't think that uh, humanity's interests converge. Like, he thinks that uh, like, uh, everyone has their own uh, uh, ideas and, and those ideas are really influenced by the environment and situation. Uh, but uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there are some common denominators. Like, we, we, do, like, we do agree on things like, like uh, I don't know, strangling cats is, is not, not a nice thing to do or uh, Ben had even like more a positive example, as, he's, as, he, as you can imagine, he's, he's good with coming up with those. Uh, so yeah, there are. I think there are things that that, that pretty much all all the people, all the uh, people in their right mind, would think that that this is clearly immoral. And uh, so I'm kind of hopeful that that uh, there are some uh, dynamics that uh, would characterize as uh, morality or ethics. General, we know that this thing is a, is a moving target, though. So it's it's so we cannot. It would be a mistake to actually. There have been some proposals that proposals that we should create an AGI that actually looks at what what people are doing. It just goes through the massive amount of videos or or like uh, basically uh, examine people as black boxes and just try to figure out what is the algorithm that runs runs uh, inside. And from that, actually, uh, predict what we're what we're going to like and what, what we're not going to like, and then stick to that. The one problem with that is that uh, we might end up with a static picture, and we know that our morals and ethics have, have developed over time. Like if you go back to back to Egypt, like five five thousand years ago, like people had completely different idea uh, what what was moral back then. And even if you go back, uh, uh, like uh, forty years ago, look look at movies from sixties. Like you see, like men slapping women, like to no end. So it's like, and that was like it was okay back then. It's no no longer okay today. So you see that things things keep changing there. Yeah, my uh, uh, grandfather uh, was uh, uh, a priest, <laughs> and and I was largely raised by him. However, interestingly, he wasn't like. Now to look look back, he didn't. He was actually very like me, so I, I, I kind of I'm pretty much influenced by him. Looking back, I didn't don't really see any like serious religious behavior like, in my memories of him. So so I, I'm not religious now. HI, in my view, is clearly an uh, engineering problem, and and so and uh, if you look at technological progress, it's really driven by. Uh, deliberative design and uh, not much by the religious revelations which like the art and uh, music etc. have been largely driven 
over over the years. So that's actually a kind of a, I think it's an interesting, <coughs> nice contribution that religion has made uh, to humanity. All those uh, uh, magnificent pieces of art. But uh, I think, in general, because religion is uh, useless in uh, predicting the future, and you need to predict the future, you need to figure out how this uh, system is going to work when, you, when you're going to pre press the flash button. You cannot have uh, an enlightenment that uh, will get you to the moon. You actually have to build a device that has never been to the moon and make predictions what is going to happen. When, when you uh, push the button. And the only way you get good predictions is build, having a good world model that actually uh, corresponds to the world as it is, not how, how you like it to be. Yeah, I think of course, yeah. It's, it's uh, uh, like, we all do it, like just having mobiles. That's uh, like, we, we have majorly changed in the last day. Humanity has, made, has uh, gone through a major change, especially like third world countries, uh, by introduction of mobiles, and uh, that's that's very very recent uh, uh, innovation. And uh, yes, it is, I, I don't see anything uh, sort of sacred in uh, human um, in in the, in the past past human condition. People quite often they kind of idealize that. Uh, Grass used to be greener, etc. But uh, no, I think think uh, using technology is fine, and uh, as long as you're doing it in a, in a moral way, it's, uh, it's you actually kind of have to do it to to uh, make, make our lives better. Uh, that's a tough question. As uh, Nick Bostrom has uh, said uh, about. Uh, uh, intelligent system systems, and his quote was that uh, when dumb, smarter is safer. When smart, smarter is more dangerous. So uh, there is this uh, thing of uh, we're going to see more and more intelligent technologies coming up in the in the next decades, and society really responding and changing as a result. Uh, some of the changes are bad because there will be higher un unemployment, for example. And some of the changes are good, like uh, when people just have uh, higher life quality. This trend, I don't think we, 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 we can really very easily, very confidently extrapolate that trend, that, that this trend will go to infinity, because it doesn't. Like, at the moment, moment we create something that we not, can no longer control, that's too smart uh, for us to control, this trend breaks. So uh, it's, uh, we have to be conscious of that uh, break-off point. If I want to be conservative, I'll say uh, double digits this century. Uh, but that's really conservative. I think it's more close to 50% or, or over 50% this century. Like in the next 20 years, perhaps about 10%. So, so it's, it's, it's actually really like, in, if I think about top uh, three ways that I could die, it seems that AGI is one of those. Or like, uh, recently I've, been, I've taken uh, up more interest in, in bio, biotech and, and perhaps actually it's really competing with AGI right now. So it's, it's, uh, it might be another way to bring about a huge disaster and that might actually get there first than AGI, before the AGI. Since I don't know what sentience means, like in uh, sort of, uh, how to tie sentience to the laws of physics, and I'm a physicist by background, by the way, it's um, my ethical codex doesn't really say anything about uh, non-human sentience beings because I, I don't I can't really relate to them. I don't I don't know what what sentience means in a non non-human being. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but another, another point is that uh, I have this uh, metaphor of pitfalls. Like uh, when uh, I see that there are like large pitfalls uh, on the like, 
train of thought when we're trying to think about uh, AGIs. Uh, there are there are there's a sequence of pitfalls that people fall into, uh, and uh, like only only if they are manage to avoid uh, those pitfalls, the, their thoughts start to be interesting, in my view. Uh, and the first pitfall is that uh, uh, they think that human level intelligence is special. So so and if you if you believe that, which is not true. Uh, then, then uh, you get all these uh, questions like, uh, what if the, what if we get human level uh, machines? How are we going? To, are we going to give them uh, voting rights? And are we going to consider them conscious? Like, yeah, those are interesting questions. But there, this is, the situation is really unlikely to happen that we will create, uh, we will create uh, human level machines and they, things will stop there. Why wouldn't? Why wouldn't? How? Basically, it's very unlikely to. Uh, that we are able to of creating human level machines and making sure that they will not go on creating uh, smarter machines or, or be smarter by accident because they are different hence they will find a lot of low-hanging fruits how to improve themselves in the first millisecond. I think playing God term is like really ambiguous so it's like I don't really have an answer to that. Since the start of technological progress, we have done that, and, and it's, it's unlikely to see, unlikely to happen that we, we're going to stop. Like all the, the invention of medicine, I mean, the lifespan of humans has tripled in the in the last uh, I don't know thousand years or even less. I don't know, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but uh, like we used to die at the age of thirty or so, like not not so long ago. And, and isn't that playing God? Like does that does that qualify as playing God? If it does, then it's like fine in my view. I have not, don't have any complaints about uh, my prospect to, of, of, of living to 100 and possibly beyond if, if the technology catches up. They have some intuitions about, uh, about things that they think are natural and the intuitions about things that are not natural but uh, those intuitions are likely wrong because like, if they are really put into such situation and that they actually have to decide. Like for example if you if you think that uh, radical life extension is uh, like really unethical, playing God, something we shouldn't shouldn't really do. Yet, if you are if you are uh, actually put in a situation where your child, for example, is, is about to die of old age, or if yourself are about to die of old age, and you and you you get the uh, uh, pill that you will get uh, uh, a few few more years here, you're very likely to take that pill. I think this really goes back to the to the assumption that we, we are able to create uh, machines that are on our level. My point is that we are not. We are really either, either create uh, machines that are below our level or vastly, vastly above our level. So it's uh, it's like uh, they might not have this thing called cognition at all. They they just uh, it's it's almost like, a, like if we create something that's uh, like vastly below uh, above our level. I liken it to the to basically changing the laws of physics, and that's how that's why we have to be really careful here. And uh, and in in a way, we see that technological progress has sort of changed the laws of physics in the sense that uh, like nuclear bombs are clearly impossible if you if you uh, consider the world view and what we thought of physics like just a few hundred years ago. So so like like as we create something that's uh, vastly smarter than us knows the laws of physics way better than we do. It, 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 it is just able to rearrange things to, in a way that, uh, uh, that completely, completely reconfigure the environment and, uh, in a way that seems completely magical to us. So in that situation where the, like, everything is changing in a way that uh, completely, seems completely magical to us, trying to analyze that change in the in terms of agent or agents and their cognition, I think it's like ants trying to analyze human technological progress in terms of pheromones. Smarter than us machines are not, are not possible in principle. I ask them that uh, what kind of evidence would convince you otherwise? 
like what uh, like if you make a prediction and that is a prediction you're saying that, that machines cannot uh, do what people do if you if you make that prediction like it, that's a hypothesis like the value of hypothesis is, is what uh, uh, what other things like uh, is there any way to disprove that hypothesis than, than just actually create this thing? So, so like what you would expect from some such hypothesis to say is that, oh, machines cannot play chess at a human level, for example, or they cannot uh, drive cars at human human level because this like basically you take some some uh, uh, intelligent behavior and, and and you say that okay, humans machines never can reach that, hence they cannot do anything that human human can do. But the thing is that, that people don't say that because we see machines uh, catching up uh, to humans and, and going way beyond us in all, like, pretty much any intellectual activity we can think of. So, which is, in my view, it's a very shaky hypothesis to say that, yeah, yeah, in, the, in, the, in all the individual uh, cogni cognitive tasks, machines can catch us to us and vastly surpass us, but they really remain dumber than human. In, what does that dumber than human even mean? That, uh, that hypothesis. Well, I guess people don't necessarily um, evaluate the, the evidence in the same way. I mean, yes, like, some people say because there is no generally intelligent AI now, there will mm -hmm. never be one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like I said, at the Humanity Plus conference, uh, uh, even if one says that uh, uh, even if it's true that, that uh, machines can never catch up and will never catch up uh, to us like, I don't know, ballet dancing or, or, or uh, poetry, which is unlikely, but, but uh, they might not catch up to us in poetry, I think they will. But, but anyway, there are a lot of domains that, that uh, people uh, are active in. So there very well why it might be that, that uh, machines will not catch up to us in all domains. However, there are two domains that really matter. So, so, uh, and those domains are politics and programming. So, so once machines catch up to us in politics, they take over the control on this planet. Once they get up, get us up to us in programming, which is, seems to be much simpler, uh, they will be able to uh, program better machines. And, and all the technological development these days is more and more about programming, more and more about software than hardware. So, so it's, uh, it's once they reach our level in programming, they can go on creating even better machines. So, so the next generation of machines will no longer be human uh, generated. And, and we, this, this is another way of how we lose control. Thank you.